How's it going knife nerds? So I got a knife in here today I have never handled before in for modifications and so I wanted to do a little overview and personal opinions on the knife and uh, show it to you in the stock form and then after I'm done uh, refinishing it. So this is my good brother uh, Mr. Frank Castro's uh, Thresher made by uh, BRS Blade Runner Systems who is mostly famous for doing ballast songs but broke into doing titanium folders just a couple of years ago and uh, they have a few different folders in their lineup and this is one of them this is a uh, Gavco design the uh, Thresher which he has he has done those with you know he's made his custom threshers and he's done them with uh, drop and probably I think there there was another company he did a thresher with as well but uh, this one is coming from BRS and uh, this is a huge honking knife I'm guessing about a 3.75 inch blade I haven't really looked at the specs but uh, yeah we've got uh, full titanium scales here with a reversible pocket clip and then um, it doesn't say the blade steel on here I think it's M390 I want to say um, this is 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 a full you know a titanium frame lock in their higher end stuff and uh, yeah so thumb stud operated it is a flat grind and beefy look at that blade stock guys this thing is super freaking thick on the on the spine there but it does come down to a very slicey edge with a rather wide uh, sharpening bevel there. And so with all of this belly on this upswept kind of uh, sort of Persian looking style blade stock here, um, it's got a nasty cutting edge. So this thing will cut like a champ for sure. Um, now, so... Uh, does have this blue full titanium backspacer that goes the full length of the spine there and uh, it does have a milled titanium pocket clip which is rather tall and um, yeah other than that it's a very basic uh, frame lock on bearings and uh, it's got the little matching blue color on the thumb stud there there is no internal milling so it feels pretty hefty in my hands it's a very very solid filling knife uh, particularly with that super thick blade stock this thing just feels really stout there is no play any direction whatsoever um, I don't know who the OEM is for this because um, uh, BRS is not saying but uh, judging by the feel of it I'm guessing it's either made by Wii or Best Tech um, it could be artisan as well, but it really feels in that Wii or Best Tech, um, you know, build quality to me. Very tough, very beefy, very well built. Um, I will say that the thumb studs are loose. I don't know if you can hear that, but I'm able to move those a little bit. This is a used knife. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll rectify that, solve that situation when I do the mods on it. But uh, not a big deal. Everything else is really, really solid. And uh, you can see in there, there is absolutely no milling pockets in there whatsoever. So we're just flat-sided, solid slabs of titanium, which are also thick and beefy. And uh, as for the action, not very drop shetty. And because... It is extremely smooth, but uh, but because um, it has a really strong detent on it, that's why it's not dropping for me. Um, this detent is super strong. In fact, I'd say a little too strong for the uh, thumb stud deployment here. So when I mod this, I'm probably going to retune that lock bar and get that just a hair lighter so that it'll be a little easier to deploy and be a little more drop shutty for Mr. Frank. Um, but it is a, you know, it is a good detent. It's snappy, um, very snappy. And I can, in fact, even left-handed uh, left 
thumb deployment on this no problem it comes out real nice in fact it's actually feels a little easier for me to do it left-handed than it does right-handed I'm getting a package guys hold on just a second oh oh the timing of that that's a new core essentials belt there guess I'm gonna have to edit out my address here um, yeah so brand new core essentials belt just arrived right in the middle of my review this is not my first core essentials belt um, they came out with a new line of colors and a new um, skinnier buckle and so I wanted to um, get an update man I freaking love 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 my core essentials belt guys um, that is the keeper to keep the end of the belt tucked and this is a slightly slimmer buckle than what is on my current one and the reason I got this um, is because mine is actually the buckles like boom it's like that wide right and uh, I've got a new um, sidecar holster from tier one and uh, the clips are just a little too close to the buckle if I if I do the center buckle it's very difficult to get the holster on yeah I can move the buckle around to the side of the hip and do it like that but yeah I, I wanted to try and see if I can make it work with the buckle in the front so I got the slimmer buckle there and if you guys have never tried a Core Essentials belt, you are seriously missing out. I don't know how I survived life without a Core Essentials belt. Um, this is my new one in the multicam. <laughs> Hotness, hello, love me some multicam. And if you don't know, Core Essentials has the ratcheting system so that you always get a perfect fit for your belt no matter what you're carrying or how you're wearing your belt you're always going to get a perfect fit you can adjust it on the fly with one hand man um yeah we got off track here because i got a mail call right as i'm filming the video but boom yeah core essentials belt brand new to me and let's get that back out of the way and get back to the thresher here all right so where was I okay um, action little stiff on the detent deployment is very good however um, I will tune that detent a little bit lighter probably um, just so it's easier to deploy and a little more drop shutty now um, ergos very very freaking good it's slim it's a slim uh, handle through here and man it just fits your hand like a glove it's very slim your thumb rests nicely up here there is no jimping unfortunately um, that would have been a nice touch to add to this knife but it is not there um, and we've got some uh, crazy deep milling on this arrow pattern here and uh, yeah so that's probably pretty cool little milling there although it's not raised above the scale so it can't be classified as jimping it's just a mill pattern um, the one thing I will say about the knife in hand is that the clip is super tall um, if, if this had been lower slimmer flatter more sleek um, this would feel even better in hand it, the clip is just a little obnoxious it's not a hot spot it doesn't there's nothing pokey but it's very large and you definitely feel it in your palm um, and I just think it could have been a little bit better but that's um, the biggest con so far for me that I've found with the knife and so um, now I am rather surprised how good this knife is this is my first experience with a BRS frame lock folder um, I have handled one of their one of their ballast songs before which was really good uh, but yeah the quality here is very good you know I know they're using a good quality OEM to make these knives and uh, you know pretty awesome 
So, um, other than that, um, there's going to be some mod work done here. Mr. Frank likes uh, very plain Jane raw finishes, and so I will be blasting and tumbling this uh, pretty much everything on this knife and getting it down to a raw stone washed finish and so with that being said i'm going to cut the video here go mod this knife and i will bring it back and show you guys the end result when i am done okay and we are back with the finished product here so uh fully blasted and tumbled we got a dark blast and tumble here on this uh bad boy gavco thresher Man, I really like how that backspacer looks on this uh, matte gray finish. It all looks pretty sick. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, whoops, boom. Okay, now we just got a really nasty fresh edge on there. Beautiful uh, stone wash finish all around. And uh, yeah, so Mr. Frank, he loves these Plain Jane user finishes, and I've been just getting a ton of requests for exactly that. Um, a lot of people want a more casual finish on their, you know, users, and so i um, been doing a lot of that. Um, <clears throat> anyways, man, uh, back to the knife now. Um, in my adventures of uh, refinishing this knife, a few things I have discovered. Um, one thing that I guess kind of, you know, I, I mentioned the con of the clip being really tall. And there are a few other cons. Um, and the biggest one, I guess, is the placement of the detent ball in relation to the tang of the blade. So... Um, let me get a little further away here and maybe you can see this. So when you go to close this knife, um, your average knife, the detent ball would hit the tang of the blade about right there. And then you would proceed to lift that detent ball up onto the tang and then you can close the knife, right? Um, unless it has a detent ramp and then you can just push past it real easily. This does not have a detent ramp. And the, um, the detent ball, let me show you. So we get our, our pathway started right there. And boom, it's all the way, the freak, way down here at a complete 45 degree angle before the ball hits the tang. And it's just, it's, it's pretty awful, to be honest. Um, when you, you know get way up here um typically you know you'll you'll want to push past that detent ball so let me show you just how far okay i hit the tang right there and then to get up on the blade i'm all the way there now the ball is on the blade and it's literally that far to get the ball up on the blade before you know you hit your ability to be able to close the knife and man that's that's pretty bad um you know it's one of the worst ones that i've seen as far as um detent ball pathway and and getting up on the tang if there had been a detent ramp on the knife maybe not so noticeable but without a detent ramp this is very noticeable and very annoying and so um you know i guess the average user probably won't care um, but me being, uh, you know, the, the knife nerd that I am, that's a detail that really bothers me. Um, yeah. And uh, on the action, I was not able to successfully reduce the lock bar pressure on this knife. Um, I did. I, I reduced the lock bar pressure and I was able to spidey flick it open and it was way easier to thumb deploy. And I'm like, cool, this looks good. And then... And then I checked the lock up, and yeah, we had we instantly had lock uh, up and down lock play, and so there is absolutely no room left on the um, on the lock bar insert to be able to adjust this to reduce um, lock bar tension 
and make the knife uh, have a better action and a more drop shutty action. Um, so, you know, um, that being said, it, it's, it's pretty uncomfortable for me to deploy with my right hand, uh, partially because it's such a skinny frame that my fingers are touching that lock bar and it makes it harder to open. If I carefully remove my, my fingers from the lock bar, it opens significantly easier. Um, very easy thumb flick. If my fingers don't touch the lock bar, if my fingers are touching it, I have to really work it and it's kind of torn up my thumb uh, playing with it a little bit. And so that's an issue. If I go left-handed and my fingers are not touching the lock bar, I mean, it's just it's just butter. It's just super easy to deploy. Um, so it's not that the detent is overly strong. It's that it's such a skinny frame. The combination of the lock bar uh, being touched with the fingers, it just doesn't, it's just not working out for me. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe this doesn't bother Mr. Frank. I hope it doesn't. Anyways, um, yeah, so man, great Argos, beefy, beefy blade stock. One thing I did notice is that the, the pivot in here is a 1 8 inch pivot, very tiny, little tiny 1 8 inch bearings, which is strange on such a giant, um, big, beefy knife. Um, and, uh, you know, we and best tech don't use 1 8 inch pivots or little bitty bearings like that so um this to me screams that this is probably built by qsp in fact i haven't even seen these small bearings in um like artisan cutlery knives either um i've only seen smaller 1 8 inch bearings in qsp knives and so um even though brs is not admitting who their manufacturer is on their folders um, I'm gonna go ahead and say probably QSP or you know somebody along those lines with those little tiny bearings and tiny pivot so yeah man um, overall not a terrible knife I you know I think it's cool I think it's got great design elements from Mr. Gavick and uh, mm, you know really big and you know loud and uh, yeah big gnarly platform here but uh you know with short of those few minor gripes that i have it's not a terrible knife i would certainly recommend it i don't know what these cost i didn't really look at specs online or anything of that nature um if it's if it's a 200 to 250 dollar knife yes you're definitely getting your money's worth here if it's much more than that probably not so much uh but yeah very cool, man. Thanks for sending this along, Mr. Frank. I hope you enjoy the new finish, and uh, we will catch you guys in the next video. Later.